Okay. <clears throat> We welcome everyone to our morning worship on this Sunday, April of Corsica County, Texas. And uh, so at this time, uh, the ladies will take charge. Oh uh -huh. 
Texas, Cuba, all of the things that we say about you, you are. We come to you this morning with praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for being what you are, for who you are, and for your relationship with us. We thank you for waking us up this morning, giving us a mind to get up to go to Sunday school and attend church. We thank you for our health and our strength. We thank you for the activities of our limbs, our minds, such as it is. We thank you. We thank you for your grace and your goodness. We thank you for all that you do. We pray for people in the world, global, there's chaos all over the world. And we pray for people who are trying to get out of countries because they're going to war. We pray for people in Ukraine who cannot get out of countries because of war. We pray for people everywhere. We start in our country, and we start at the highest office, at the office of president and all of those subjects under him. We pray that they will govern, uh, do the things that right things that yes. they're supposed to do. We pray for our state and our local government. We pray for uh, the ceasing of the senseless killing of people. We pray for the gun violence to cease. Uh, there's so many young people, so many kids who are being lives being impacted by gun violence. <coughs> also, the lives are being impacted by chemical drugs. We pray for them. We pray for the sick and the shut in yeah. in our group, in our town, in our community. We pray for those who are behind prison bars. <coughs> We pray for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sin. Yes. We ask your forgiveness. All of us, when we do the wrong thing, we ask you to forgive us and allow us the second chance, the third chance, however many chances we need. And it seems a lot. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. We pray for the leader of this organization who has had surgery. We yes. pray that she is healing <coughs> and will be back with us soon. Uh, uh, as soon as it, as it becomes necessary. We also pray for the speaker this morning. Yes. That, that uh, things will go well with her. And all of these things we ask in Jesus' name. Charity is 
kept unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether they be promises, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they are bonds, they shall pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect comes, then that which is poor shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. <coughs> I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away all childish things. For now we see through the flesh our arms, but then face to face. Now I am going to the heart, then shall I know the evil, and also I shall know. And together, and, and now by faith, hope, and charity, these three put the greatest of these in charity.
So uh, we want to invite everyone back for Mother's Day. Oh, Sunday's in between there as well, but also on Mother's Day. Uh, and are there any other announcements? If there are not, we have, also, we have some people to add to our uh, prayer list. Uh, we found out uh, that Sister Sharon Coleman has been in a car wreck towing her vehicle, uh, and hopefully she's doing well. We learned this morning that uh, Brother Danny Phillips II, Danny Jr., was also in a car wreck towing his vehicle, and his dad was going to check on him. He did come out to church. Uh, we know that Janelle Randall is ill, and we continue to pray for the family of WMS Life member Joanne Hoffman, as well as all those with uh, health and medical issues, including our own sister Deborah Buzzle. Amen. And those are all the announcements that I have. Mm -hmm. All right. And the altar call was in the book. Okay, mm -hmm. Sharon. Mm -hmm. We're glad to have our visitor here again. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time recently. Praise the Lord. Amen. Always welcome at night. We um, also understand Sister Bessie Bell is not feeling well because of allergy problems. And so let's uh, keep her in our prayers. Any other prayer requests at this time? Yes, I would like uh, the church to be in prayer for uh, Mrs. Decker, my daughter, Brittany, her and Zariah are in San Antonio, Texas, for a school function. Uh, they will be traveling back late tonight to be back in time for Zariah to go to school this morning, and Brittany to go to work. Also, on, I believe it was Wednesday night, um, we had a tornado in Waco, Texas, and in China Springs, and in my belief, chill out of Zariah's car. Oh my. And really, they don't have just been in the house barely three weeks and part of their roof blew off. So oh my. Uh, we're asking for prayers for them. They do have home home with security. We thank God for that. Amen. Uh, but uh, they were they were at work and the children were at home and they called them that they left work and they got home to find the results of the hail that they knocked out the car window and hit some of the roof. These storms lately have been something else. I uh, had to cancel more or adjust certain plans this week more than once because of the bad weather. But Sister Russell is improving. Uh, she has an appointment with her surgeon this next Thursday. She, was, she got out of the hospital last Sunday evening, and so she's been in arrogance ever since. So let's continue to pray for, with, for her for Brittany and their family, for the Phillips family, and Coleman, and Bell. Any other prayer requests? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I'm asking that you take control now of each situation. We know Satan is busy seeking whom he may devour. Lord, but you're able you're more powerful than the devil will ever be. And Lord, we know you're able. You can and will. You have the last word all the time. We pray for each person and each family whose name has been called. Give them healing. Give them strength. Deliver them through, throughout whatever the problems are. Lord, we know that you don't promise to move the mountain to give us the strength to climb. And we know that with you in our lives, we can turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. We know that a lot of times the best way is not to avoid the problem, but to go through the problem and obtain victory. God, and direct us in all that we do. And give us victory in the name of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Black History Moment is taken from my library at the house, my bookshelf, or lots of interesting black people that have done tremendous things. In this book, it's about Patricia Russell McLeod. And she is 
her book is called A is for Attitude and Alphabet for Living. And let me just go through the alphabet real quick. A is for attitude, B is for brain power, C is for courage, D is for dedication, E is for effort, F is for freedom, G is for genesis, H is for heritage, I is for intuition, K is for know-how, L is for life, M is for meditation, N is for now, O is for organization, and P is for preparedness, excuse me, preparation. Uh, Q is for questions, R is for risk, S is for survival, T is for truth, U is for unity, and V is for vision. W is for willpower, and X is for x-ray, and Y is for you, and Z is for zodiac. And the reason why I chose this book this morning, we as women and we as black women, we have to stay ready. We have to stay prepared. It's time out for being jealous and envious of other people just because they got a blue dress and you got a brown dress or you have shoes and they don't or they choose not to wear them or whatever the case may be. We need to start encouraging each other. Leave the jealousy at home. Leave the attitude at the door. We need to com be compassionate and considerate of others. If you don't have anything to eat and you let me know, I'll share what I have with you, but I can't do that if I don't know. I can't help or pray for your illness or your situation if I don't know. So if you tell me, I'll be in prayer with you and for you. But this time out for jealousy, because I believe and I always have, there is enough work in the kingdom for all of us to be doing something. And there's no need to be jealous or envious of what the other person may be doing or what they know. So let's be in mind for that. So this, this author, um, <clears throat> quickly, I just want to read about <clears throat> what an inspiration she is. She said, this is from an, another friend. She said that, Patricia, when I met Pat 16 years ago uh, during a Lynx Incorporated event, I couldn't help but notice her uh, majestic, majesticism. She was a virtual field of energy and electricity that literally draws to individuals from across the various dis disciplines and walks of life. She engaged them with dialogue, but that was enlightening and encouraging and well heartfelt. But what she writes about is what she has lived. She has had various jobs. She worked for AT&T. She worked for Burger King. She worked for Southwestern Bell before it became AT&T. Quite an active society where some people stay in one job forever, forever, and nothing wrong with that. But when you venture out and you have opportunities to learn and see and go different places, that is phenomenal. It's exciting. So one day we may be reading about uh, ourselves. I mean, we know our pastor is an author and he has a lot of good books. And we too can uh, write about something that is meaningful or touching in our lives to be an inspiration. So if you have the opportunity or if you would like to borrow my book at some point, uh, Patricia Russell McLeod is an excellent author. Um, she does talk about and has a message of personal empowerment and per professional accountability. Shows us how to have courage to, to face life and as it has to offer the disappointments and the pleasures. You know, you got to take the bitter with the sweet. Using the alphabet as a touchstone, A for attitude, and alphabet for living offers you chapter by chapter a new co commitment to assess your strength and fulfill more of your potential. You learn to live with courage, to tap your genesis and brain power, your genesis and brain power to fight for justice and truth, to take risks and to develop a vision. A is for attitude brim, brims with Adelaide's advice and action step and provides a blueprint for a successful life that has meaning, substance, and contentment at its core. No one should do it alone, so I encourage you to read Read, read, read to your children, read to your grandchildren, and most of all, read for your own self awareness. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, Billy, what you were saying about uh, helping someone, dividing what food you have with them, reminds me a fellow said to me many years ago. He said, if we only have one egg, we can divide the yolk. And that's true. <laughs> Great little truth in that.
Gospel choir.
Let the people know that we are here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to lift you up and to praise your holy name. I ask, Lord, that you would give me the strength and voice to do this and to be with me as, as we uh, conclude this program. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, and we thank you, Lord, for uh, reminding us who you are and what you have for us. These and all of the blessings we ask in your darling son's name. Amen. Amen. Today is April 30th, uh, a good Sunday and a Sunday to celebrate the Women's Missionary Society. As you all know, our president is recuperating from surgery and our invited speakers could not make it, so here I am. This will be short, hopefully sweet, maybe all over the place, but I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in the Lord's sight and in your hearing. On May 30th of 2021, during the middle of the pandemic, I spoke on the topic, Are You an Essential Worker? Since we are past that, although COVID is still around, I thought about revisiting that topic and asking this question. What did we learn from that time? that two to three year space in time. And I laugh because the pandemic is over, but starting Monday, May the 1st, that will be the first day that we on my job will be able to work without our mask. Mm -hmm. After all this time, we are finally able to give up our mask and we thank God for that. But we know COVID is still there. What did we learn from that time, that two to three year space in time? Well, we learned several things. We learned, number one, to adapt. We had to change in midstream, in midstream from the way we were doing things to the way we had to do them now in order to remain safe and to keep one another safe. We learned that routine is not necessarily important. The things that we thought we had to do a certain way at a certain time in a certain situation were not all that important when it came to being safe, saving yourself, saving your fellow man. We also learned that routine is important. It's important because what we become used to, what we become comfortable with is a support to us. And we had to find a way to change our routine and keep our routine at the same time. That was a big learning curve. We learned that access is important. Access to work, access to education, access to the world as a whole, shopping, entertainment, recreation, all those things. <coughs> we had to uh, adapt and learn how to access those things while staying safe. We learned that we are responsible for, to protect one another health-wise, as well as physically, mentally, and spiritually. We learn the ethics, that is how we do what we do, matter. It matters that we are kind. It matters that we can put someone else's uh, feelings ahead of our own. It matters that we speak to people in a, in, a, in a loving way. We learn that that does matter. Sometimes when all you heard of people was their voice over the phone, the way you spoke to them made a big difference. We learn that we are essential. We are vital to the work or mission of God. Now in this book, according to what AMEs believe, told you I'd be all over the place. According to what AMEs believe, a book was developed for the AME Church by the Seventh Episcopal District under then Senior Bishop John Hurst Adams. Amen. Our understanding of missions in the African Methodist Episcopal Church can best be expressed by a passage of scripture. In Luke 4, 18 to 19, which he calls Jesus' initial sermon, Jesus announces his mission by reading from the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 
This passage finds its expression in the AME Church as our understanding of a mission that is both spiritual and social. And if you were in Sunday school, that was the last two words in the Sunday school lesson that our church was founded on things that are spiritual and also social. Our Zion is rooted in what was a theological emphasis toward freedom and justice, as well as a social protest. That sense of direction is expressed in the mission and purpose of the church, in the doctrine and discipline of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and the mission and purpose of the WMS. The doctrine and discipline uh, of the AME Church, the connection of WMS mission statement is this. We are called to strengthen our faith and sent to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ by service and witness to the world. The purpose of the WMS is this. As women called to discipleship to grow in knowledge and experience of God through Jesus Christ, committed to support the mission of the church, and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are challenged to help one another engage in ministry and action and grow in responding <coughs> faith to God's redemptive plan for the church, the society, and the world. To accomplish our purpose, the organization shall, and then it is seven steps that the organization shall do to, com to accomplish this purpose. Now, our local society, the Dennis Johnson Women's Missionary Society, does not have a mission statement, but we embrace the connectional mission statement and understand that we are essential to its execution. Why? Because a mission statement, why? Because mission statements that don't mean anything why? Let me reread this. I'm getting it wrong. Why? Because mission statements that don't. Why? Because mission statements don't mean anything if the people who profess to believe it and follow it don't do anything with it for someone else. A mission statement does not mean a thing if the people who profess to believe it and follow it don't do anything with it. Or someone else. Being essential in body means taking the focus off of you and placing it on your mission to serve the best interest of others, which serves the best interest of us all. All missionaries, in fact all Christians, all those who say they love Jesus Christ should see themselves as essential and vital. Being essential and vital means you're vital, you're indispensable, you're important, you're crucial, you're critical, you're needed, and you're necessary to the call to strengthen our faith and being sent to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ by service and witness to the world. But sometimes, sometimes we forget. Reading from uh, Daily Hope for a Woman's Heart, Back Porch Reflection on God's Word by Sarah Beth Mark. And this is for April 30th, which coincidentally is today. It reads, Sometimes I forget. Then they said, this is a, a, a scripture, then they said, Ask God whether or not our journey will be successful. Go in peace, the priest replied, for the Lord is watching over your journey. That's from Judges 18, 5 to 6. Sometimes I need a gentle reminder. No. Sometimes I need a loud reminder that God is in the details and that he is on this journey through life with me. I need to know that he is working behind the scenes. And sometimes I forget and I get caught up in worry, fear, doubt, and uncertainty. Those emotions drain my faith. Remember today that God is watching over your journey. God sees your whole journey. And he is working tirelessly on your behalf. He is orchestrating, intervening, and working in all the details of your life. He is busy, even when you feel like nothing is happening. So don't lose heart, dear friend. When you feel like you are waiting for an answer to prayer, or waiting for God's direction in your life, or just waiting for his peace to pour over you, talk to him about what is on your heart and know that he is at work on your behalf. That prayer is, dear Lord, you know how easily I forget that you are at work in the details of my life. Help me to remember that you are always watching over my journey. 
Thank you for your constant work in my life. And when I lose sight of you, draw me back to you. Draw me nearer. God is working even when you can't feel it or see it. Have faith that he is guiding your journey day by day and that he will never leave you. We are still learning and still remembering. And you know, there is a space, a time between forgetting and remembering that we might call in the meantime. That learning time, which can also be known as the details. Reading from the meantime, a diary based on the best-selling book by Inyama Van Zandt, Poor Abel. It reads, remember that you are always being prepared for something better or protected from something worse. When the divine reason for the meantime, the in-between time, that time between forgetting and remembering, when the divine reason for the meantime union has been fulfilled, or when the divine season for the meantime experience comes to an end, you will move on to exactly where you need to be because you have waited for God in the meantime because God is in the details. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of meantime scenarios that give depth and meaning to life. The meantime between jobs, between the argument and the reconciliation, between the separation and the divorce, between the test and the results. Each of these meantime experiences, although fraught with anxiety and stress that make them seem almost unbearable, is emotionally and spiritually profitable. When you are in the meantime, when you are in that middle, when you are in the details, you must not make time an urgent matter. Time is of absolutely no consequence when you are doing healing work directed toward inner growth. So what should we do in the meantime? What are the details of our meantime? Well, we should begin to, or continue to, share our faith in God, spread the word of God, show the love of Christ, treat others as we want to be treated, when we want to be treated right. Think about that. If we were what they call raised right or trained up right, we should remember that and act on it. If we ever wish for a good thing to happen to or for us, wish that same good thing for someone else. And we should think, T-H-I-N-K, before we speak. Got some other little things here that I need to put my hands on. Ah, here they are. We should think, T-H-I-N-K, before we speak. T, we should think, is it true? H, we should think, is it helpful? I, we should think, is it inspiring? N, we should think, is it necessary? And K, we should think, is it kind? It is written, remember whenever you're in a position to help someone, be glad and always do it because that is God answering someone else's prayer through you. The thing before you speak nugget comes from a pack of cards I was given entitled Life List for Mothers last Mother's Day. And I'm not sure who gave it to me. Somebody in this church gave it to me, but I'm not sure exactly who it was. One of the cards lists uh, eight ways to please God not just as missionaries, but as children of God. And they are, one, do the right thing for the right reasons. That comes from Matthew 6, 1 to 8. Two, pray God's agenda, not yours. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Number three, forgive others. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Number four, prioritize eternal things, not temporal ones. Matthew 6, 19 to 24. Number five, do not worry, Matthew 6, 25 and 31. Number six, seek the kingdom first, Matthew 6, 33 to 34. Number seven, do not judge others, 
Matthew 7, 1 through 5. And number 8, as we have just said, do to others as you would have done to you. That's Matthew 7 and 12. I always remember, and I said this before, that iconic scene in the movie Color Purple, the Color Purple, that shows why it is essential and vital that we remember the detail in showing the love of Christ whenever, wherever, why ever, however, and in whatever way we can. You remember when Sophia said to Miss Sid, she said, when you helped me that day, I know there was a God. She knew there was a God, not because God had come down and helped her pick out the groceries and put them in her basket. She knew there was a God because God sent someone to help her do those things. And we want to know, the question is, has anyone ever known that there was a God because of something you did? And finally, in closing, I want to read part of a song and part of our scripture. This song is by this group, and y'all may not know them, but I do. Uh, Rascal Flats. Okay. Uh, they are a country group. That man has a beautiful voice. Well, Lord, okay, so you do know. Uh, and this song is called, I Will Stand By You. He starts off, I will stand by you. And I'm not going to sing it all, but I'd love to. And that comes from Joshua 1 and 9. Then he says, I will help you through. Isaiah 41 and 10. When you've done all you can do and you can't cope. That's 2 Corinthians.
And if you remember your uh, call to worship, God does not forget. Now, if you look on the front of your program, and also on the back of this pledge card, there is a scripture that says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Ephesians 2 and 10. Thank you. Amen.
But the message of the Bible from the first of Genesis to the end of Revelation is he doesn't have a chance. He's already defeated. And if you have your faith in Jesus Christ, you're going to be on the winning team. That's the main thing to remember. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will uh, continue our worship through giving. Brother Larry, will you come at this time? Good afternoon to all of our virtual audience, and we thank you for being with us again today. And uh, we hope that you got something out of our speaker today that will help you through your day, your week, and your month. Um, we hope that you enjoyed our services, and soon we hope to see you in person. Uh, we welcome your virtual participation. If you'd like to give to this uh, ministry, uh, I we would appreciate it. In the church, 101 North 4th Street, Corsicana, Texas, 75110. You may also give online by going to our website at www.bethelamecor.org under Give the Pie. We thank you so much. God has a perfect plan. Yes. Amen. And it's not over till it's over. Amen. And uh, again, God has the last word all the time. Anyone like to have a word at this time?
other word at this time? Sister Carter, would you like to say something? <laughs> Sister Maxine? Brother Larry? She said it all. <laughs> she said it all. <laughs> Amen. Okay. As we normally do on our fifth Sundays, want to ask everyone to come forward now and we'll be joining hands uh, or getting can we join them? <laughs> well we get staying closer we don't have to touch but we can be in a circle for our missionary be benediction um, anybody who's been in the Amy church very long knows the missionary benediction and it's not hard to learn.